Hey, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're really excited about this uh, about this workshop. Um, we're looking at uh, all four of us actually came up through Mainframe and Rainmaker. Uh, Donovan uh, Stinson, who's the actor that'll be doing the performance. Uh, we met back in 97, 98 on one of Canada's first mocap stages. And uh, that was at Mainframe. So they did Reboot, Beast Wars. And then when we went on to do um, um, uh, Action Man and stuff like that, we uh, end up getting the uh, the mocap stage. So it's been a really incredible journey for our for us, all four of us actually in virtual production. We're starting from mocap and then getting to these LED stages. Um, so I have Paul Furminger here, who's uh, who's uh, he started at Rainmaker too. And he, I don't know if you were able to see his uh, his his lecture that he did while he was out out there. Um, he uh, his journey came through Rainmaker as well, and he uh, he did Fish Flight Entertainment. I'll let him uh, give a talk about himself. Go go, Paul. Hey everyone. Um, yeah, I've worked with uh, uh, Craig and and Graham both since two thousand eight, and uh, Donovan since uh, I think two thousand five was the first time we worked together, and uh, uh, doing episodic animation and lots of games work. And uh, the shot actually was from uh, Fight Previs that uh, I did at Dark Horse Ten, which I, I talked about in um, the uh, lecture that I did. Uh, last week, but uh, I've, I've put in a lot of time uh, directing mocap, directing mocap for um, a straight up animation for stuff like Invincible, for stuff like uh, um, more linear narrative cinematics, and also for stuff working with Graham with uh, Gearbox. We worked on um, New Tales of the Borderlands, and that was all uh, interactive storytelling. So shooting cycles, shooting idols shooting lots of different variations, coming up with a really efficient way of doing that, which uh, isn't uh, necessarily obvious if you're used to working in just linear content. So I'm hoping to bring some of that to uh, what we go over in uh, in Winnipeg in a few weeks. I'll pass it over to Graham. Right on. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate the intro. Uh, I should say my name is Graham Qualley. I've been doing mocap for about 17 years now. Started out on the coattails of these fine gentlemen that uh, paved the way for Rainmaker having a mocap stage. And uh, I hopped on that in uh, 2006 and was there for oh, just over five years. Then I went out to Toronto at Ubisoft. I helped build the Toronto mocap stage along with the team there. I was uh, uh, employee number two of the mocap stage and I left when I had participated in the hiring of about 65 people. So I left when the team was about 65. Founded Beyond in 2017 in partnership with the, uh, we're uh, in partner with the Vancouver Film School. And we just this year in June opened up uh, a second location in Montreal, which is arguably the world's largest. It's uh, a 20,000 square foot uh, performance capture stage in Montreal. So super excited to do this talk and uh, hopefully pass on some knowledge uh, that I've picked up as I've gone. So. Thanks, everybody. And Graham, do you want to uh, just show your reel and just talk a bit more about the services and uh, you know what you guys are up to from doing video games to animation to doing feature films and stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. I'll show. I'll talk a little bit about it. So we here. I'll show the demo reel while I, I talk a little bit about it. Then let's see. Da, da, da. All right, let's see if we can uh, do this for, make this better for optimized video clip. All right, everybody can see this.
There it is. Cool. And, and, and one of the things is, you know, with motion capture, it's just not for video games or for digital, the like digital end sort of things. There's pre-production. We use it a lot for pre-production to get our the ideas quickly and to be doing pre-visualization for, um, you know, for the scenes. And we've also been doing pre-vis. Paul can talk a bit about, uh, we did Sonic, uh, Sonic 3 last year. Paul, do you want to talk a bit about how that usage, usage of that was? And using it for uh -huh. pre-vis? Yeah, I mean, it, it's great just to get a whole bunch of different uh, uh, cycles in so that you can quickly pull stuff and uh, just reuse it, you use uh, portions of it. And over time, you kind of develop a, a library of stuff. And uh, like I, I mentioned, uh, just in, in one of the um, uh, workshops last week, just about uh, there's stuff out there. Uh, libraries like um, Mixamo and and other things where you can pull some quick uh, mocap, uh, lay it out, get something uh, to like a previs level, and then work with a company like Beyond to get final capture and kind of really add that that extra level of uh, performance in there. And I see uh, Donovan is up too. If we want to intro him, I see his. Hi guys. Shot. Hey, hey uh, uh, yeah, no, it's yeah, fine. Donovan, we've been working with for almost, he's been doing it for almost 30 years. Uh, so a veteran. And what I'll do while you talk, Donovan, is I'll, uh, I'll just queue up your reel here and uh, and just show that while while you while you talk about what, what all the fabulous things you've done. Uh, cool. Everyone can hear me okay? Yep. Okay, good, good, good. Um, my apologies for being a little late. I was just, uh, I was just working. Um, yeah, so uh, I've been doing uh, motion capture uh, for 25 years now, about. I, um, I started in 1999, uh, 98, 99 at Mainframe Entertainment with uh, it was a cartoon called Heavy Gear. Um, uh, Craig McCune was at Mainframe at the time, too, and then went on to do uh, another, uh, another show called Max Steel. And then from Max Steel, we went into Spider-Man, we went into uh, Action Man. Uh, a lot of a lot of different cartoons and then you know the odd barbie movie too which is uh pretty interesting and then i didn't play barbie by the way uh and then i started getting into like a lot more uh game stuff i started doing a lot of ea i worked on i think the first one i worked on was like ncaa college ball just doing like the the crowd motion and then eventually did like james bond night fire and that kind of rolled into a lot bigger titles bigger roles so I started doing uh I did like Mass Effect, like the Mass Effect series, Lord of the Rings, um, you know, did the movie District 9 and a lot, a lot of games. Some I've, I've, I completely forgot. Graham was showing me a video the other day of, of uh, uh, a game that I don't even remember doing, which is kind of bad. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've been doing it for quite a long time. Um, just recently did uh, Hogwarts Legacy um, for WB Games, which was a really fun one. And uh, uh, yeah, there's like some of the games that I've, I've worked on there. So um, yeah, man, I've, I've been doing it for, for quite a while. Um, and now, you know, it's pretty fun because we're kind of pivoting into a little bit more of this workshop stuff. So I get to kind of share my experience of doing it, um, what I've learned throughout the years and be able to kind of, you know, share my knowledge with people that, uh, that want to get into the industry. Um, yeah. I hope that that was enough. I don't know. It's weird talking about you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, thanks, Donovan. Um, uh, Jonathan, did you want me to introduce the three days, or do you want to do that? Uh, I think. Do you have some slides for that, or do you just want me to go off that? Um, I I do have some slides. They're not yeah, they're not great. really queued, but maybe I can just set it up. So okay. The 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 point of the of this info session is that. We have uh, these uh, these wonderful workshops coming up, um, but they they do uh, require some context, I think, because uh, they they touch a lot of different um, uh, potential participants. Uh, but basically, the, um, the the events have all just gone live uh, now, uh, so they're they're all up on Eventbrite, and I'll put them into the chat as soon as I stop talking. Um, but let me, if you just bear with me, uh, I will pull up the three slides here, and then maybe we can have a quick look uh, at what we're gonna be do offering and uh, and then maybe Craig and the gang can uh, sort of uh, explain uh, which each one is. So we're starting off where we always should. 
uh, with, uh, let me just share my screen here. Where are we here? So many windows. Uh, we are starting off with a fundamentals workshop. Uh, this will be happening, uh, Craig, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't have my calendar up here, but it's happening, I think, March uh, 6th. And this uh, is... It's March 4th. Pardon me, March 4th. Once I, once again, I'll, I'll put the links in the chat shortly. March 4th. Uh, and the idea is just to kind of create that kind of foundational knowledge um, uh, for participants. Uh, so this will be a one day, like a nine to five type workshop. Uh, Beyond Capture and uh, and Paul from, from Fish Flight and, and Craig as well will all be uh, on hand and they'll really kind of be going uh, over the fundamentals of uh, of what uh, participants need to uh, to understand about mocap and maybe Graham I'll I'll, I'll just quickly throw it to you uh, while I dig up those links to kind of explain like what you're going to be covering kind of in that first in that first day. Thank you. Um... So we're going to throw a bit of a wide net on the first day. We're going to be talking about not only, you know, what is motion capture, the history of motion capture. We're going to let people know uh, sort of like vocabulary around mocap so you don't sound like a, a noob when you walk onto the shoe floor and that you'll be able to sound like you know what you're doing because I've been faking it for 17 years and I know what it's like. Um, we'll go over some very uh, fundamentals of, of how it works and how the different systems are, how there's optical, there's inertial, and then we'll get into getting into real-time, capture, post-processing, everything. And then we'll talk about the, the difference in uh, motion capture to performance capture, the different technologies, how they've come together over the last 20 years, what it means for actors, what it means for uh, directors, how virtual production, pre-production, pre-vising all fits into it. And then we'll talk a little bit about AI. I'm, I'm, I know a lot of people, I know there's a lot of talk around AI in that, but I, I think actually it could be a positive thing, get more people hired and more people working. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Awesome. So the link is uh, now actually in the chat, so you can uh, check that out yourselves. I will. And, and oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, John. Yeah, I was just going to say, and and for that day, it'll be Graham and Donovan will be predominantly uh, presenting. So I'll just let Donovan talk a bit because they'll be presenting back and forth, sort of thing of from the technical as well as from a director's point of view, and then also from an, the performance part of view. Do you just want to expand on that a bit, on Donovan? Uh, yeah, so so basically, you know, what we're going to uh, kind of touch upon, especially with the actors and a bit with the directors, too, uh, we're going to be doing uh, a lot of basic uh, motion stuff. So what you predominantly would, would get a booking for in a video game, you tend to do, obviously, you'll do cinematics, and that could be performance caption stuff. Uh, but you end up doing a lot of N, uh, NPC stuff. So you do a lot of creature movement. You can do a lot of, you know, the gameplay movement. And so what we want to try and show you is that kind of um, that kind of building block, if you will, of, of motion capture, where you are going to be able to uh, transition from many different characters. Because a lot of times game teams will, will hire you, uh, but you will be playing several different characters. It's just, it's in their benefit to have someone who who can, can can switch between larger characters to smaller characters to human characters, so on and so forth. So we're going to be dealing with a lot of like kind of basic idols, breathing, bringing characters to life, walk cycles, run cycles, that kind of thing. I'd love to be able to touch into it, just a little bit of weaponry if we can, but it's basically about just embodying whatever character that's going to be. Um, and so we will kind of walk the actors through that and the directors too, uh, of, of how you can basically, what, what a, a shoot day could end up looking like, especially if you're having to do quite a bit of shots in a day with lots of different characters. So we'll be dealing with eye lines, if, if characters are taller, smaller, that kind of thing, and, and reactions and all that kind of stuff. It'll be super fun. And, and then also for that day one, it's really to to demonstrate, you know, the possibilities and the opportunities with mocap, but also around that stage uh, in Winnipeg there. So it's, um, you know, it's it, there's so many different ways you can go with mocap. And as Donovan was saying too, just with creature movement or biped or quadruped, but really helping, you know, see sort of the breadth of things that can, that can be done from the technical side, as well as from the performance side. So, so that first day is really like a good sort of dip into what is motion capture, that connecting of direction, technical and performance. And I will like just to, to kind of set expectations uh, 
we do not have uh, 16 um, mocap suits that people can jump in. We we <laughs> do have kind of a, a limited number of suits, uh, so like it's it's not going to be a it's not going to be a in suit workshop uh, for for folks who kind of are uh, into that. There's obviously lots of opportunity after the workshop to come practice these techniques and, and things uh, with uh, with the two suits that we have and our, and our facewear system and and we'll make sure that uh, uh, you know if 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 you are a participant in the workshop that we we give you some stage time as well too where you can you can kind of practice some of the lessons yourself if if you're one of those people who likes to get into really uh, uh tight fitting suits uh there will be that uh that that chance for you to to, to play around as well uh we do have uh, two rococo mark ii suits uh as well as a uh, uh the new coil which is uh, supposed to help uh, a lot with uh um, uh, with with hand movements and things like that, and we have a Facewear Mark IV uh, facial capture uh, system. We do have access to an XN suit as well that we can bring in uh, if if you're more comfortable with that uh, with that suit from the from the Winnipeg Film Group. Okay, moving on to uh, the second workshop, which we. Uh, the art of virtual directing, uh, mastering uh, the scene. Uh, I'm going to throw this over, I think, to Paul to speak to it first. But I would say that this is probably the most, um, um, uh, how would I phrase it, like the most specific uh, day of the workshops in that this is going to be geared towards uh, both directors and performers specifically. Uh, so while the, the first workshop is uh, a little bit more general in its, uh, its approach, uh, this second one is uh, a little bit more specialized. Uh, Paul, I'll throw it to you. And actually, um, that's the third one, the mastering the scene one. Uh, the second one is um, just a mocap for director and performers. Uh, I one? think that's, oh, you know, you're absolutely right. I apologize. Let me pull up the proper slide here. No worries. So this one is going to be uh, with myself and, and Donovan. Um, so they'll be hoping to get a mix of, of directors and performers there. Um, we'll uh, be working uh, together um uh going through uh what we both look for as directors and performers giving some tips breaking down into groups uh on the on the director side there's a lot of different things to talk about it's like thinking about shooting in moves versus shooting in shots thinking about how you're going to break up performance uh thinking about uh, layering performance especially if you're working in a studio that has two suits if you need to do a scene with six people how you're going to layer that in um, and uh, even work against previous mocap. So maybe you're you're trying to add layer in some new mocap, and you're working with uh, a take that's already been uh, approved. How you can kind of uh, work against that that other performance, um, and uh, we'll also uh, come back together and be workshopping some scripts that Donovan's put together, and uh, go over analyzing performance and. Uh, what you need to look for, and from my experience, what type of movement comes through into the final product, and you know what looks good on the day maybe isn't the best data for what you need down the line. So I can uh, give you some uh, tips in that respect. And Donovan, I'll pass it over to you. Uh, yeah. So j just to touch upon uh, what Paul said, so we will be we will be dealing with a little bit more scene specific. Uh, type of motion capture. They will be small scenes, they won't be super large, but that tends to be the case when you're working on games, when you're breaking them into like uh, in between gameplay cinematics. Um, and so there we'll really delve into that kind of having to play multiple different characters and looking at eye lines and knowing the, you know, your timing of dialogue. And then obviously you will have reaction things that will happen. And so I have a pretty fun little kind of space for me and one that's gonna be really fun to do. That where there's reactions to, because obviously when you're in a motion capture volume, there isn't, uh, you know, sound effects, sometimes there's sound effects, but, you know, there's nothing to really react to. There is an actual explosion. So getting that kind of performance out of, out of the actors. And then, like, again, just touching upon what Paul said, of like how sometimes directors will break even a smaller scene up because you might have... Um, you might have different outcomes for gameplay, okay? So it could be something as simple as, uh, you know, you're, when you go back into gameplay, you're injured, and then, or, you know, you, you, you have to run into gameplay, come in, in and out of gameplay kind of scenarios. Um, 
So we'll deal with we'll deal with the little things like that and how directors can tweak it on the day uh, where you can you don't have to necessarily go back and film the whole scene. You can just do little parts of it and, and, and punch in and do tiny little movements that you might have forgotten and then and show how the directors can take piece by piece. You might like the performance that you had in take two, but then you really like the other characters performance in take five and how you can bring those all together um, into uh, into your final product. Awesome. The link is uh, the link is in the uh, chat right now, so you can uh, you can save that. I'll of course uh, pass this out as an email uh, to participants afterwards. So let's go now to the proper slide for number uh, number three. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. So this one is uh, the third the third day. So what are we at now? The sixth uh, March sixth. We're at now. Uh, and this one is going to be a kind of a little bit more uh, open. Uh, it's going to be kind of a little bit more kind of observational kind of in nature. Um, Paul, can you kind of walk people through what uh, what this day is going to look like? Yeah, totally. Um, Craig and I were just talking about all the things that uh, we're going to be going over in, uh, in that kind of two-week period. And we thought it'd be really cool to do uh, a vertical slice of, of everything, um, everything that I've talked about as far as uh, the creative workflow, um, you know, starting with uh, maybe half a page of of uh, a scene um, that integrates both motion capture that has to be layered in with um, uh, the ICVFX, you know, like the LED screen in a volume um, with um, prop and props and lighting and all those things. We'll try and uh, set it up, do a floor plan at the start, do some quick pre previs, um, put it together walk through it with um, a mocap actor, shoot the mocap, layer the mocap in, and then shoot our our LED wall scenes and end the day with uh, an edit of this mini scene, taking all those things, having the interaction between mocap and virtual production and just seeing where that handshake is uh, and just going over every step of the process. So it should be fun. And I see v VFX as uh, in-camera visual effects. Um, th this this day again is a really great breath of, to see you know what can be done with combining uh, live action with the LED wall and then with a virtual character. Um, it's again the stage that uh, that you guys have over there in uh, with Jonathan is a great stage, great size stage, and there's lots of opportunities for for what you can be done doing on that. So again, it's a uh, you know to show that you know what can be done on that and blending you know all these all these different things of virtual production because a lot to Virtual production now, a lot of people think it's just the LED wall, but it's actually that whole ecosystem sort of thing, right? With the mocap and everything combining together in the virtual cameras and bringing that together. So it's actually, it's it's, it's pretty pretty exciting for that, for, you know, for this whole, this whole week, but I able to sort of see that scene of, you know, the vertical of a scene. Yeah, I know I can I can say that, you know, motion capture seems to be kind of picking up speed here, uh, having talked with uh, some some local directors who are trying to like implement it into their like animation pipelines and 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 as Craig and and Paul has mentioned from from a previs perspective, uh I, I think we just all collectively in Winnipeg want to see more mocap happen. Uh and I I think there's been a lot of barriers here at least locally in regards to like access to technology and and, and like barriers to expertise when it especially it seems when it comes to cleanup and, and things like that. Uh that we hope that you know this session uh these this three day session can be like the uh the start of uh of more work in, in, in that area and, and that yeah people will start using this for for all sorts of uh creative uh creative projects. So, wow, we nailed that right on time. 629. Ooh, perfect. <laughs> to the minute. Yeah, I want to be like, as I said, I know we've been doing a lot of sessions lately, and some of you have been on some, all, all of them, which is amazing. And some of you are, are kind of dipping in, dipping out, or some of you are just interested in mocap, um, which is great. We, we really kind of are, are very fortunate that as part of this uh, um, training series uh, that was made possible by the province of Manitoba, uh, and uh, and IATSE 856 and on screen uh, Manitoba, we're, we're able to kind of expand upon uh, like uh, what we initially set out to do, which was kind of a little bit more on the virtual production side. 
Um, so uh, it, it's great that we can add even more, uh, hopefully, value to to uh, all of our production lives and and maybe learn some new technologies and, and collaborate with some uh, incredible uh, incredible expertise. Uh, I will also say we are going to be uh, next week also dropping a uh, Unreal uh, Engine 5.3 uh, world building workshop. Uh, there will not be an info session for that, as that is relatively self-explanatory. Uh, but I will say the instructor for that is uh, incredible. So we are just bringing in like some top tier talent to Winnipeg, and and we're really grateful for Paul and and Graham and 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 everyone with at Beyond and 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 uh, Fish Flight for I don't know taking taking the time. We know this isn't like your 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 daily life. You guys are in production for the most part, but uh, the fact that you're willing to share this information with uh, with uh, with everyone here in Manitoba is is just so fantastic. So. So thank you so much. I'll leave the I'll leave the call open. Um, if if there's if there's any specific uh, questions for people, maybe we can spend another five minutes uh, uh, punishing uh, Paul or Graham up with with questions about uh, about mocap. Just feel free to just chime in. Uh, we got a we're only at twenty one uh, participants, so it's not a giant group. So just uh, feel free to either raise your hand, or your your virtual hand, and or just kind of uh, speak into the mic and, and ask questions. I, I have a question. So. Uh... I work in the practical world in the sense of makeup effects and uh, suit performers and puppeteers kind of world. Um, so part of myself is wanting to know how to integrate and move into this, like into this environment a little bit more because it, it feels like it fits. It feels mm -hmm. like it's symbiotic kind of thing. Um, I'm not like a makeup effects guy that's like VFX or CG. Um, <laughs> I, I, I want to figure that out. Is that something that like... Like to, for instance, like when you were talking about uh, the the um, the last class of blending it all together, is there a way of integrating like like putting a tail on someone as a creature effect and having that motion captured? Yeah, hit me. I'll I'll, I'll jump in first uh, if anyone else wants to jump in afterwards. But I can tell you right now, we're doing two projects in Montreal. One of which we spent four months and about twenty five thousand dollars developing wings and tails for one of the characters. And so, yeah, that is absolutely being used in, in mocap. And not only that, but there's the on-set puppeting of his tail, but then in the game that we're doing, his tail is actually a sign of like whether or not he's lying or not. So they have built a system where in real time, we have a telling the truth and a lying button and the lying button, his tail wiggles. So it it, it, it reacts different inside the software during the scene. So they get nice real time that looks, uh, looks pretty fantastic. And, and further to that, we have a TV show that we're doing that we bring in an actual puppeteer. And I can't say what it is. It's still two years out of production, but let's just pretend it's Game of Thrones. It's not, but let's say it is. Okay. We have an actual puppeteer coming in and puppeting a dragon through the miniature scene that we were actually shooting. And then we have actors sitting on saddles, pretending that they're sitting on the back of the dragons. And they're reacting to what they're seeing in real time that the puppeteer is taking the dragon through, which is all being mocap. So, yes, there is a Perfect. lot of that crossover great thank you yeah, i think that's awesome just, just sorry guys uh, that just to just to again touch on that that there um there has been shoots before too where uh when it comes to our facial capture and stuff like that uh where they they've implemented a little bit of uh, prosthetics on actors just to basically get a different kind of performance out of their face by and their voice so there is there has been some of that stuff as well that uh the, the game companies have used and, and some cartoons as well yeah and i should say beyond is a little bit different in terms of performance capture the old way of doing it was you shot it you didn't know what it looked like and then you did your best to make it look good later we do what you see is what you get so if somebody is like you know, has large shoulders or a big stomach or something, we'll apply pads and we'll apply things to them so their hands don't go through their body. If their feet are very heavy or something, we'll lock off their knees and not allow them to bend their knees when they walk. So there's all these sort of like practical effects we use to get the right motion out of people on set. And that's very important to us. And having somebody who could do that and do it right is uh, a very rare talent that we look for quite often. Great. Any we're... last questions before we, we call it a night? I have one thing to say while we wait for questions, if, if we don't mind. I've been I've known Donovan a long time. Uh, fun fact: he was the first person I ever mocap. So I mean, we go we go way back. Um, Donovan, given your age and saying you've been in this industry twenty five years, I guess you mocapped at five years old. But uh, <laughs> but I have uh, to say, you're so sweet. <laughs> ah, just a nice guy. But I gotta say honestly, like, and I, I I've known Donovan so long, I have a hard time complimenting him. But I, I any actor who who is going to be in this in this scene is. 
very lucky to have somebody like Donovan. Like we have the thing in, in our company called the Donovan nod. And when a, a client comes in and says, you know, we want to explore with this, we want to explore with that. We got to look at each other and give each other a nod. Like, yeah, we're going to bring in Donovan for this. Donovan is probably one of the most body expressive people I, I've ever worked with. I've done 2,500 shoots. I've probably worked with a thousand actors. And I would say Donovan is easily one and two of, of the best actors when it comes to controlling his body. So any actor that joins this session is, is going to be uh, seeing world-class uh, how to handle your body, how to move things and how to express through your body. So I look forward to it every time I work with him. So thank you once again uh, to everyone in Vancouver, Paul and Graham and Donovan. Uh, Craig, uh, appreciate your time. Uh, thank you everyone uh, here in Manitoba for joining us for this info session. I hope you found it informative and uh, we will see you again very, very soon.